Hello, everybody. Glad to see you back. This is our first Sunday in Lent. Yesterday, we or on Wednesday, we celebrated Ash Wednesday. And I am coming to you with Lesson 24. And it has to do with infinite possibilities in each moment. So think about all your possibilities, things you do, things that you want to do. Our story today is God's Little Workshop. Have you ever eaten peanut butter? Think about a peanut butter sandwich, or perhaps you like your peanuts sprinkled on ice cream. Peanuts are nutritious and are used in cookies and other foods. But can you imagine making laundry soap from peanuts or lotion or printer's ink? Think about shoe polish, glue, or carpet all made from the peanut plant. You may not be able to imagine making those things from peanuts, but there was someone who actually did. He believed there are infinite possibilities, each from peanuts, even from peanuts. His name was George Washington Carver and he was born a slave during a time when most black people who lived in America were slaves. While he was a baby, the Civil War ended and he was free. His parents were no longer living, but the people who cared for George were loving and kind and had learned a great deal from them. George loved to learn and he found great joy in learning our, about plants. Many hours were spent in the woods each day studying all the growing things and listening to his, listening in his heart to what they could each to what they could teach him. George felt the spirit was talking to him through the plants. When he grew up, he said, "I love to think of nature as unlimited broadcasting stations through which God speaks to us every day." Even out every hour and every moment of our lives, if we will only tune in and remain so. George's neighbors and friends thought tending to flowers and plants a foolish waste of time. So George made a secret garden where he could care for the little plants he called his pets. He would carefully dig up plants and move them to his garden if he thought they needed extra care. If he accidentally broke a root or stem, he would cry as if he had hurt a friend. When people realized the plants he cared for grew healthy and strong, they called George the healthy plant doctor. And they would come from miles around to ask his help. He wanted to keep learning but there were no schools nearby, so he left his home at 11 years old to go to school, even though some people thought he should become an artist or a singer. George eventually became a plant scientist, which is called a botanist. He spent as much time outside in nature as he did in the laboratory and classroom. George understood that it was not enough to work hard. He had to be open to what could happen through his efforts. So what about those peanuts? Why did George learn so much about peanuts? The Southern farmers had grown cotton plants for many years, but growing cotton every year was not healthy for the soil. Growing beans or plants Peanuts gave tired soil the nutrients needed to stay healthy. George encouraged the farmers to grow peanuts and it worked really well. The soil became healthier and there were abundant crops. But when the farmers asked George what to do with all the, those peanuts, George had to think. He knew there were more, there were many possibilities, maybe infinite possibilities. 
If he were willing to work hard and God's power flow through everything he did, he said, God is going to reveal to us things he never revealed before if we put our hands in his. The peanut is an unusual plant. Peanuts are really not like nuts that grow on trees. They are more closely related to beans. The plants have little yellow flowers that bloom and then bend over and grow back into the ground. The peanuts grow on the end of that stem under the ground, hidden from the sun. George worked a long time in the laboratory to learn everything he could about the unusual peanut plant. He shared everything he learned with the farmers and other scientists and became famous. Years later, after George had discovered that over 300 uses for peanuts, a man asked, Dr. Carver, how did you learn all those things? George answered, from an old book. What book? The man asked. The Bible, George replied. The man was surprised and asked, does the Bible tell about peanuts? No, sir, George explained, but it tells about the God who made the peanut. I asked him to show me what to do with the peanut, and he did. George never took credit for his accomplishments. He said, without God to draw aside the curtain, I would be helpless. George felt that it was divine power that flowed through him in all creation. George was a great scientist who changed the world with his work, but he was humble and called his laboratory God's little workshop. So let's think about these questions now that we've heard the story. Peanut butter is made from the inside of the peanut. What other parts of the peanut plant do you think George learned to use? Do you think it would be fun to be a plant scientist? What do you think George meant when he said God would draw aside the curtain. Hmm. Are you ever afraid of trying something new or being different because of what people will think? Do you think that right now there are infinite possibilities in each of us to be creative? I think there are. Have a great week. See you again.